We live in a world that glorifies accomplishment, performance, and hard work. In schools from a young age, we are taught that success is measured by the grades we earn, the accolades we receive, and the career path we choose. But this unbalanced pursuit of achievement is harmful to us all. And I'm here today to share with you an antidote to this stressful way of living. I was a curious child who loved to imagine, play, and have fun. I was an intrepid explorer in the woods, in the park, in the garden, but my favorite place of all was rock pools. I spent my summers on the coast with my grandmother. With anticipation, I would turn over the rocks, push aside the seaweed to see what would be revealed. Would I discover a colorful starfish or a hermit crab that would scuttle off into its stolen shell. I was so engrossed in my own little world that the minutes would turn into hours until I would be startled out of my daydream by a grumbling tummy or shouts that dinner was ready. This curious child turned into a studious teen and adult, and I entered the fields of medicine and later high performance coaching where excellence is expected. I worked insane hours, I pushed myself beyond my limits, and as with many high achievers, there was a cost. I rarely did anything for fun. I didn't know how to relax or be fully present. And for years, I suffered from exhaustion, stress, anxiety, and depression. And at times it robbed me of my joy for life. Now, for those high achievers in the audience, I must reassure you that excellence certainly has its place. In education, in your career, in your relationships, in your health, work hard and have high standards. You don't want your surgeon, your architect or your electrician to half ass their job. You want them to be expert and diligent. And as the old saying goes, if you're going to do a job, do it well. But what I've come to learn over the years is that the obsession with achievement is harmful to the high achiever and everyone around them. Everyone feels not quite good enough, never truly worthy or successful. And it robs us of our happiness and peace. In addition, the high achiever feels performance anxiety, imposter syndrome, and feels that they are constantly searching for the holy grail, the one thing that will finally make them feel content and fulfilled. And all of this leads to workaholism, stress, burnout, all of which are at an all time high. In 2020, I was a results coach for a famous coaching company when I caught COVID pneumonia and almost died. Despite having significant breathing difficulties, reduced lung function and severe brain fog, I took off only five days because that's what high performance do, right? During my long recovery, I was coaching a pediatric transplant surgeon who was burnt out and unfulfilled in her job. One day she came with creative business ideas, but I was on autopilot and told her, mastery is better than dabbling. And then it hit me. She had done mastery for years and it was making her miserable. When she told me about her ideas, she lit up. She was excited, motivated and hopeful. And so I changed the direction of our coaching and encouraged her to dabble more. This sparked in me an aha moment. I realized I also needed to dabble and I found peace, joy and contentment in kayaking and nature photography, often those two at the same time, hiking and gardening, both of which I am still pretty terrible at. Dabbling also helped me recover from my severe brain fog. Now, before we go any further, I'd love to share with you my definition 
of dabbling. Dabbling is the art of exploring new interests, trying new things and allowing yourself to be a beginner again with no expectation of the results or pressure to perform. Try new activities with curiosity and an open mind just for fun. Allow yourself to be a beginner again, knowing that you are going to be mediocre at best and most likely pretty terrible at first. But remember, the things you have now mastered, you once struggled with and you learn more from your failures than from your successes. Did you know dabbling is really good for your brain? The human brain loves novelty and trying new things. When you dabble, you form new neural pathways that improve cognitive function, that is your thinking abilities, and reduce cognitive decline. Your brain loves to learn until the day you die, unless you develop dementia. When you dabble, there is a complex process that activates multiple regions of the brain and millions of neural pathways. Dabbling stimulates the release of a powerful cocktail of neurochemicals, in two, including two famous ones, dopamine and serotonin. This decreases stress, increases arousal and attention in the brain, improves memory, motivation and mood. In addition, dabbling improves flexible thinking and creativity. And there's a wonderful ripple effect in your relationships and your physical and mental health. Now there is another not so scientific benefit to dabbling. You may discover hidden talents, like the artists Matisse and Frida Kahlo, who discovered their talent for art while dabbling, while recovering from major illness. And Louis Armstrong, who discovered an extraordinary natural ability for music, while dabbling, aged 11, in a juvenile detention centre band. So today, I want to invite you to reduce your stress and learn to love your life through embracing mediocrity, through trying new hobbies, new activities, new creative endeavours, just for fun. So if you're game, raise your right hand with me and say, I am a dabbler. Wonderful. Now go out into the world and dabble. Thank you.